Hello, hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. It's not that close up, right? If I had to describe the World Championships in three words, it would be stressful, painful, worth it. It's just fucking pissing me off that we're so prepared and fucking... Fucking send it. Look at the size of that one! Oh no, he's not! He's not! Oh, he's not! 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 He's People are starting to realize that bigger kiting is a full-time job and if you want to be the best at it, then, you know, you have to completely dedicate yourself to that. For me, the GK World Championships was not as big as the Red Bull King of the Air if you think about how much anticipation and build up and hype the Red Bull King of the Air has. But in terms of getting a world title, it was very important for me because I knew this was a very good chance for me to get that second world title. Let's take it easy bro, I don't want to fuck myself before the comp. Normally I change stuff before the comp, like I, I stress out about it and I try to do things different, but as I'm here at home, just do the same Play shit. Tennis Play tennis, drink some beers in the afternoon. Honestly, if you would have beat me, it would have like fucked with me a bit for the cops. <laughs> I'll be a good friend then. I'm not superstitious at all. <laughs> How you doing? Good, you doing good? <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I just realized that I'm up against Liam and uh, Edgar. In the first round? First round, 30. I'm excited and nervous at the same time. The fleet is good. Like in terms of uh, the competitors, uh, it's pretty next level. I think this is the first event where you see so many good people riding at the same spot in the same competition and uh, oh! I'm a little bit worried yeah because I don't have any double loops or any S loops. The progression of Big Air over the last year has been crazy it's just been going up and up and up and you know this year the hype has kind of been the double loops the S loops and just the board off Kai loop with many many rotations to the point where I don't know how we know where we are in the air. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's exciting times because Big Air is just so, so visual. A normal person can rock up to the beach and watch it and see us performing these tricks and, and be amazed. So I think it's, it's, it's great for kite surfing in general. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, another 7. How many kites are you taking in total? Like 8. <laughs> All right guys, so it's the end of the day before the competition. Prepared all of my gear. Well, have to finish a few things off still, but yeah, overall feeling really good. Very relaxed, hopefully get a great night of sleep today so I can be full of energy tomorrow. And tomorrow is the day to put everything on the line. I don't know if we're gonna complete the event in one day, but no matter what happens, we're gonna go for it and it's gonna be a great day. See you guys then. Sick. Yeah? Yeah. Did you felt it coming. Did you sleep at all? Yeah, I slept super deep, but I woke up half the night like <laughs> and I know I'm fucking spitting out mucus for the last ten minutes. <coughs> I've been in that situation many times before, waking up feeling sick or a sleepless night before the competition and I've I've come to realise that it doesn't matter, you know. Uh, as soon as the, the adrenaline of the competition kicks in 
no matter if it's a sleepless night or you're feeling unwell, you will forget about it. Adrenaline will take over and you will be ready for the competition. Yeah, feeling pretty good. I mean, this is a new event. It's exciting. No one really knows what's exactly going on and how it's going to play out. But, uh, you know, that's an exciting part of it as well, you know. So it's cool to be in Europe and actually compete in a... Like, I haven't competed in a different event in almost five years. I've just been doing King of the Year. So it's exciting to put myself in something different as well and see how it works out. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Depending on where you are all around the world, I am Joe Siasha. Joining me here in the booth is Lewis Crafton, and we are going to be presenting you with day two of competition for the Qatar Airways Big Air World Championship. It's uh, about as good as we're going to get today at the minute, and uh, hopefully it picks up throughout the day. It's been a struggle to get the right conditions so far, in, which is super unreal for Tarifa, but... It is what it is and let's go. It's probably the best uh, big air fleet I've seen in a long time now with all the younger generation coming through and yeah, a few of the older guys all together. You know, it's been a bit split in the past in competitions and I think now it's going to be pretty solid. There's no easy heat, that's for sure. Feeling good, feeling super relaxed. I'm up against Nick Jacobson and Edgar Ulrich, both super strong contenders. But um, it's a non-elimination round. Obviously it benefits me to win it, so I'm going to I'm gonna do a few nice tricks and hopefully advance straight to round three. Let's do this. My first heat, I was up against Edgar and Nick. It went pretty terribly, to be honest. I was very angry with how it went because I was so prepared for the heat. Everything was planned. I'd been training. I knew exactly what tricks I was gonna do. And as soon as I launched my kites, like five minutes before the heat, my lines were completely tangled. Made it to the heat, like, 30 seconds late. Very tough heat up there against Nick Jackson and Liam Whaley. And uh, here we go, Joe. Oh, it's off, it's green, it's go, it's go, go, go. Let's see, let's see. And can, and then really maneuver it back to get that down loop. And Liam, oh, going for, like you said, one of the hardest. Okay, Liam Whaley, once again, we have a board off variation, not quite getting it, so it is Nick as we come into just a little under. Can he stick it, Joe? Is he back on making four off of Liam? Yes, he can. I don't know. It's just fucking pissing me off. They were so prepared and fucking. No, I know, I know. bro. Bro, miramos las líneas en plan 10 minutos antes de la manga la próxima vez. Wow, that was awfully stressful. <laughs> I thought I had all my gear and everything super prepared, but I get my kite up, my lines are completely mixed, my leash is not attaching, my watch is off, everything that could go wrong went wrong, so I arrived to the heat pretty stressed out a little bit late. But luckily I managed to kind of pull it together, perform four good tricks with a little, a bit of variety. So yeah, just managed to, to pull through that one. So straight into round three, stoked. I think it can only get better from here. All right, so up against Stig, round number three. Yeah, let's keep it going.
and that is the end of that heat. Okay, here we go, Liam Whaley. Riding here at your amazing home spot, Balneario. Just one through your heat, three, two, round number four. How do you feel? Yeah, feeling great. My first heat of the day really didn't go well. I had a little tangle in my lines and, and got to it pretty late. But this one was a lot more stress-free. Got out, I was relaxed, composed, and didn't go full send yet, but just did the tricks that I feel very comfortable with. And yeah, I think I got a good score. I haven't checked it yet, but uh, I advanced. So now I'm up either against Edgar or Jeremy. Jeremy. And they're also sending it, so I'm excited for the next one. Awesome stuff, good luck, and hope to see you back here after the next round. Conditions are definitely challenging, uh, but it went well. I managed to move on to round three, and uh, yeah, again, represent Tarifa, the home spot, just like Liam. I mean, this is uh, it's what it's all about. Balneario will give us some difficult conditions, but you gotta fight through it, and it's gonna be a good one. Balneario is definitely up there with a few of the most extreme spots in the world for Big Air. The wind is gusty, it's strong, it's offshore, and a lot can go wrong. One case in particular is Yannick, super talented. Yeah, his kite just didn't catch him, fell out the sky on top of his board, and literally broke both his legs, his heel, his ankle, and he's had five surgeries now. So yeah, spot can be pretty dangerous, bigger can be pretty dangerous. Wishing Yannick all the best. <laughs>against Jeremy Brolando. I don't know why I'm holding your hand. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this is the quarterfinals now. He's riding super well, so I'm gonna have to push it a little bit harder in this heat. And I'm, right now I'm kind of deciding whether to do a big handle pass or do a double kite loop. So yeah, you'll see when the heat comes. <laughs> This is a big heat. Jay Bozo is being waved. Jay Orlando definitely one of the top riders to watch. Who will be a king of the air at the next edition?
Semi-finals up against Lorenzo Cassati. He's been absolutely killing it. Duotone teammate, so hopefully I do as good as the last heat and pick him out. <laughs> Next up is going to be the semi-final coming our way as we have Lorenzo Cassati is going to be going up against Liam Whaley. Is it gonna be enough? We're waiting because that variation score is gonna have to come our way as it's standed. I won, I won. You won? You won? Yes. Yeah, motherfucker. Yes, bro. Are you serious? Yeah. That was very intense, very stressful. The strategy didn't go how I wanted it. I crashed a couple times, so I wasn't able to change to the Neo to try some double loops. Megan? Yeah. It fucking made it, man. It fucking made it. That's sick, bro. Uh, I'm gonna go see. Buena. Buena. Buena, brother. Lo siento, pero. Yeah. <laughs> Tienes muchos años para ganar, tío. Yeah, sí. <laughs> Ahora ayúdame a mí a ganar. <laughs> In the final, I knew this was gonna be very challenging to win, but for me it was literally all or nothing. This competition in general, I really, really wanted to win, so. I was going to give it everything, even if that meant potentially hurting myself. Next up, it does look like we have a final out there on the water. And I can see eight minutes on the old buzzer, on the old ticker, meaning that the grand finale. This one could go anyway. You know, are we going to see the double fight moves here? We've seen so many big moves here today. Gusts of around 36 knots already down here, Tarifa. And we have Liam Whaley versus Andrea Pritipi. What is going to happen? Eight minutes on the ticker. Who is going to be taking the first move? Look at the size of that one. Oh, talk about two big openers here. Andrea Principi and Liam Whaley. 148 meters from Liam Whaley. That is the longest I think anyone's gone. I definitely had some sort of strategy coming into this competition and knew that double loops were going to be a big factor. Leading up to the event, I trained some double loops. I didn't get much strong wind, so I didn't have the chance to train it as much as I would have liked to. But I got a few down and they didn't seem so complicated. And then in the final, of course, on that last attempt, I went for a double loop. Um, yeah, that 
didn't really work out. Oh, Liam's asking for the chains. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. To the edge of your seat, get the popcorn stand on the edge of your sofa. It is going to be a double look. Oh what coming God. your way? Oh my God! Action. In the sea week running along, this is what we want to see here. This is epic stuff here in the final of the men of the Qatar Airways Big Air World Championship. Come on, Liam! Get it in Oh my God! The paddy almost flew away. He's got it! He's under control! Oh no he's not! He's on him! No. Right, so we'll give him the board! Give him the board! Give him the fucking board! And now we're going to have to see if Liam Whaley is going to be able to do it again so it looks like... Liam is going for the oh. Oh, Coming God. down like a ton of bricks. Oh, oh wow. I hope he's all right. Talk about leaving it until the end. At the moment, it still is. Princey Pete in the lead. Is Liam all right? Didn't feel a gust. Didn't see a wave. Just took off off the flat with no gust. Kind of closed my eyes and just, just went for it. Opened my eyes. I looked at the kite. It was just at the side of the window. I was falling out of the sky. I kicked my board off landed super hard. I came up and kind of felt my body and, and everything kind of seemed in its place. And then I looked over and the red flag still wasn't up. So I was very confused at that point. I body dragged, got my board and yeah, I still looked at the flags and the red flag wasn't up. And I was in so much pain at that point. I was kind of thinking in my head, at what point do I draw the line and, and like say it's enough, you know? I didn't know if I'd hurt myself or not. And yeah, at that point, after thinking about that for about five seconds, the red, red flag went up. Ah, oh, fuck, bro. He did a massive air sleep at the end, right? No, no, he did. No, 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 no. What do you think? Close or? Ah, oh, dude, come on. It was so fucking hard, bro. You think he got it? Yeah, I think he's got it. Yeah. But that is fucking cold. Fuck, oh, bro. What a disastrous change. Yeah, fine. Amazing find. Man, I just needed that one trick and I, I had it, but my kite was fully depowered. I don't know, I don't know. See, love you, say yeah. So, how did that final go? It was a bit like a moon. Yeah, what an amazing day overall. A lot of stress and really difficult, challenging heats throughout. I think I progressively got better, which is, you know, it's normal for me up to the semi finals, but to do it even better in the final. There's what an amazing day. Andrea is a super strong competitor. Yeah, I definitely put my heart into it. And yeah, I would just like to thank everybody on the beach that gave me the support. My sponsors, Duotone, Porsche, Ion. You guys are amazing. And hopefully we can keep on going up and making great content, great results, and keeping it awesome, man. Looking back at the competition, I'm pretty happy and proud of how far I got. I definitely always try to make myself believe that I am the best and that I'm gonna win. And of course, you look back at events and you always see all the mistakes you've made and you try to correct them for the, the next event, but it's always harder than it looks. You can never prepare for what mother nature and, and unexpected things are gonna throw at you. So you can only prepare as best you can. And I think I did that for this event. So overall, very happy vice world champion you know of course I want the world championship always I want to be number one but I've learned to to be happy with how life turns out rather than regretting and trying to change things so yeah onwards and upwards <laughs>
Go! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh fuck! Seb, you're gonna want my footage of that one. <laughs> <laughs>